Deep Microbiology presents an insightful lecture on the D-test, an essential method for detecting inducible clindamycin resistance in bacteria. Before we explore the D-test method, let's take a moment to understand how resistance works. This will help us better grasp the importance of detecting resistance in bacteria. Overview. Clindamycin is often used as empirical therapy for suspected Staphylococcus aureus infections due to its excellent pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic properties. It is also an alternative treatment option for MRSA, methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, and is frequently used in pediatric patients. However, clinical failures of clindamycin therapy have been reported in cases of MRSA infections where the strains were sensitive to clindamycin, but resistant to erythromycin. These failures are attributed to inducible resistance to clindamycin. What is inducible resistance? Inducible resistance is a phenomenon where bacteria, such as Staphylococcus aureus and Streptococcus pneumoniae, develop resistance to an antibiotic in response to exposure to another antibiotic. In this case, we're discussing clindamycin resistance that can be induced by exposure to erythromycin. What causes inducible resistance in bacteria? Inducible resistance occurs because certain bacteria possess genes, known as macrolide lincosamide streptogramin, MLS genes. These genes enable bacteria to develop resistance to antibiotics both in vitro, under laboratory conditions, and in vivo, within a living organism, to macrolides such as erythromycin, lincosamides such as clindamycin, and streptogramin antibiotics. Macrolide lincosamide streptogramin B, MLSB, antibiotics are a class of antibiotics that inhibit bacterial protein synthesis. They share a similar mechanism of action and are effective against various gram positive and some gram negative bacteria. Now, let's explore the different types of MLS genes. What is types of MLS genes? 1. ERM genes, erythromycin ribosome methylation. This gene can modify the ribosome, leading to resistance to macrolides and lincosamides, including clindamycin. The image shows a bacterial ribosome with its two subunits, the 50S and 30S, involved in protein synthesis. Clindamycin, an antibiotic, binds specifically to the 50S subunit of the bacterial ribosome, targeting the 23S ribosomal RNA component within the peptidyl transferase center. This center is crucial for forming peptide bonds between amino acids. By binding here, clindamycin inhibits protein synthesis, blocking the translocation of the growing polypeptide chain from the aminoacyl site to the peptidyl site during translation. This blockage prevents the continuation of peptide bond formation, effectively preventing bacterial growth. In bacteria that possess ERM, erythromycin ribosome methylation, genes, these genes encode methyltransferases that modify the ribosomal RNA in the 50S subunit. This modification involves the addition of a methyl group to adenine residues in the 23S ribosomal RNA which alters the structure of the peptidyl transferase center. As a result, the binding site for antibiotics like clindamycin is changed, leading to antibiotic resistance. 2. MSR genes, macrolide streptogramin B resistance, encode efflux pumps that expel the antibiotic from bacterial cells. It confer resistance, but typically affects macrolides more than lincosamides. It can sometimes work alongside ERM genes. This diagram illustrates various types of drug efflux pumps in gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. Efflux pumps are mechanisms used by bacteria to expel toxic substances, including antibiotics, from their cells, which is a key factor in antimicrobial resistance. In gram-positive bacteria, macrolide streptogramin B resistance is typically mediated by efflux pumps encoded by MSR genes belong to the ABC superfamily, 
which are also involved in pumping out macrolides and streptogramin B, leading to resistance against these classes of antibiotics. However, the efflux mechanism does not effectively recognize lincosamides, meaning that these drugs are not efficiently pumped out of the cell. As a result, lincosamides remain unaffected by this resistance mechanism. In gram-negative bacteria, the Maccabetol C efflux pump is associated with macrolide resistance and can contribute to macrolide streptogramin B, MSB, resistance. This pump belongs to the ABC superfamily and is specifically known to expel macrolides out of the bacterial cell, thus reducing the effectiveness of these antibiotics. 3. VAT genes, virulence-associated toxin, provide resistance to streptogramins through various enzymatic modifications. Here we explain how VAT genes confer resistance to streptogramins. VAT genes encode enzymes, such as acetyltransferases, that chemically modify streptogramins by adds an acetyl group to the antibiotic. This modification changes the shape of the antibiotic, thereby reducing its affinity for the ribosomal target, which is essential for its action in inhibiting protein synthesis. Now we are explaining d-test methods and the interpretation of results. D-test is an in vitro test for clindamycin to detect the inducible clindamycin resistance in bacteria. Principle of the test. The D-shape observed in the D-test is a result of inducible clindamycin resistance in bacteria that are already resistant to erythromycin. Both erythromycin and clindamycin discs are placed on an agar plate inoculated with the test organism. Erythromycin acts as an inducer, triggering the expression of bacterial resistance mechanisms, and the area around the clindamycin disc may exhibit a flattened or D-shaped zone. Method. Both the erythromycin disc, 15 micrograms, and the clindamycin disc, 2 micrograms, are placed at a distance of 15 to 26 millimeters from each other on a Mueller, Hinton agar plate, and then incubated overnight at 35 degrees Celsius, plus or minus 2 degrees Celsius. After overnight incubation, results are interpreted as indicative of inducible clindamycin resistance if there is flattening of the zone of inhibition adjacent to the erythromycin disc referred to as the D-zone. Interpretation of results. If both erythromycin and clindamycin are sensitive, this suggests that the bacterial strain lacks inducible resistance to clindamycin. If both are negative this suggestive of constitutive MLSB phenotype, this phenotype means the bacteria have a stable or constant resistance mechanism to macrolides like erythromycin, lincosamides, like clindamycin, and streptogramin B, often due to the ERM gene encoding methylase. If erythromycin-resistant and clindamycin-sensitive give circular zone of inhibition, this suggestive of MS phenotype, MS phenotype stands for macrolide-resistant and sensitive to lincosamides. This phenotype generally lacks the inducible resistance mechanism, for example the ERM gene, and often results from an efflux pump mechanism that specifically expels macrolides without affecting lincosamides. If erythromycin-resistant and clindamycin giving D-shaped zone of inhibition with flattening towards erythromycin, this suggestive of inducible MLSB phenotype. D-test is positive. Questions and answers. Question 1. What are the implications of a positive D-test in MRSA treatment? A positive D-test indicates inducible clindamycin resistance in MRSA due to the MLS gene, meaning clindamycin may fail in treatment despite appearing effective in lab tests. In such cases, Alternative antibiotics like vancomycin or daptomycin should be used to prevent clinical failure. Question 2. What is the difference between inducible resistant and constitutive resistant? 
Inducible resistance, like IMLSB, only becomes active in response to certain stimuli, such as the presence of a particular antibiotic. Constitutive resistance refers to a type of expression or activity that is always present or active, regardless of environmental conditions. Question 3. How does the ERM gene contribute to antibiotic resistance in MRSA? The ERM gene causes resistance by methylating bacterial ribosomes, blocking macrolides and lincosamides like clindamycin from binding. This can be inducible, meaning resistance is triggered in the presence of drugs like erythromycin, making certain MRSA strains resistant during treatment. Question 4. What alternatives to clindamycin are effective in pediatric MRSA cases? Alternatives to clindamycin for pediatric MRSA include vancomycin, daptomycin, linozolid, and trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole with rifampin. These options are effective when clindamycin resistance is present, ensuring proper treatment of the infection. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the content, don't forget to subscribe to Deep Microbiology channel and turn on notifications to stay updated.